Hey YouTube, I'm back. So, um, many of you may have seen an earlier video I did of a featherweight unboxing. So this was on my porch this afternoon. You're going to see me open this featherweight at the same, well, not at the same time I am, but you're going to not, you're going to see exactly what I'm seeing when I open this box. So I'm just going to get the scissors out and um, I'm always concerned when people ship me um, sewing machines, um, featherweights especially. Um, when I picked up the box there was a little clunk, little clang, and I had reached out to this seller prior and asked them to remove the spool pin so it wouldn't get snapped. Um, during ship and I didn't get a reply so I'm assuming that they just put the featherweight in the box the box is so small I'm assuming there's no padding around it and from what I could hear when I carried the box off the porch the machines moving around in there so let's just see what I've got here and you guys that subscribe to me know that a lot of times I usually don't show my face on the camera but this is going to be a rare appearance so anyway I'm going to take these scissors I'm going to open this box and you're going to get to see what I'm going to see so this was an eBay auction last minute and I can tell you why I went for this particular featherweight the reason why I bid on this particular featherweight is not because the serial number not because the age there were two things, well actually three things. One, there was a picture of a Singer Amoeba in the listing. So if you all don't know what a Singer Amoeba is, it's a darning plate cover, covers the feed dogs. And they can be a little pricey. Um, on top of it being an amoeba, it was um, a black anodized amoeba. So, interesting to see if it's in here. The second thing is the condition of the paint looked to be really, really good. The decals looked really, really good in the pictures. The third thing is, is the seller said the motor works, but they couldn't, the hand wheel wouldn't turn over. So, I'm up for a challenge. I want to see if I can get this sewing machine to sew. Um, most likely, my first thought is, is that it is a needs a new belt and then the belt needs to be adjusted properly from the motor boss to the arm, the arm of the machine. So taking this paper out of here. So it is double boxed. Um, so there's a box inside here, box in the box, but no, no padding around it. So I'll just tip it just a little bit so you can see, give you an idea of what I'm looking at here. And we're going to pull this box open. So there's some brown paper bags in here and some Christmas wrap. So there again, hope you guys can see what I'm seeing. So let's start with me pulling this box. Well, no, that's a little heavy. I won't do that. So let's see what's in the first brown paper bag on top here or if it's just folded it's just a folded brown paper bag i guess they use that to cover the bake the bake light handle so what i mean by covering the bake light handle is they just used it not a lot of cushion so there was no bubble wrap nothing but newspapers at the top so i don't like to pull any old case whether it be a featherweight or, you know, especially a bent wood case on a 66 or a 99 or another machine. I don't like to pull it up by the handle. I like to be able to have my hands underneath. So I'm gonna start pulling this paper out. Some really nice dinosaur Christmas wrapping paper. There again, another, never heard of this supermarket. So it must be up in Maine, Hannaford Supermarket. Just a folded brown paper bag. I'm going to save those because those are good for pattering. So I'll set the brown paper bags aside. 
pulling out more newspaper. Let's keep going. So I can get a hand under here now to support the bottom and I'm gonna pull the case out. Okay, I'm gonna get it set down. Let me show you this. Very little packaging on the inside. So we all know, or if you don't know, and you're new to the world of vintage sewing machines, especially featherweights, this is not how you package a featherweight or any other vintage sewing machine. Double boxing is great, but anyway, here's the case. It has two latches that are in, in good shape, okay? So we're gonna pop these open. And I usually don't do that. I like to pop, let me show you how I like to pop them open. I like to put my hand on them so they don't fly open, especially if they haven't been open in a while. Patches is showing. It's, but I like to just put my hand right there so they don't fly open like I just showed you. Don't do that. Um, so right here, everything's just crammed in the top. So I'm gonna walk behind the camera and just make sure that you guys are seeing what I see. And right now, I see a piece of broken bakelite and I'll bring it up close where you can see it. I'm guessing it's probably off the foot pedal. But let me see. Oh yeah, you guys have a pretty good view. So let's keep looking. So yeah, disappointed. There's a little bakelite right here. So here's the controller and they just threw it in there on top of the machine. So Praise um, the powers that be. Um, the spool pin is not broke. It's a little loose, but it's not broke. However, I have extra um, spool pins and caps. So this, I'm gonna try to see where that plastic bake light came from that was broke. Let me check out. Foot pedal looks super, super clean, but this was just over top of the machine and they just laid the foot pedal on top. They didn't even know to wrap it up and set the foot pedal, pedal down on the bed or wrap it up separate. Wires look really, really good. Connection looks good. We'll set that aside. So this is what I was going after. This is the amoeba, okay? This is the amoeba right here. So I'm gonna just see real quick. I don't see anything. Looks pretty good shape. I don't know if it would be the amoeba that came with a 221 or not, but this is one of the things I was after in this auction. So let's keep looking. So I'm going to pull the machine out. I'm scared, y'all, of course. Um, it's got a manual. Um, this manual appears to have a little tape on the top. Um, appears to be a little older, but right here, this is the sticker that was on the front, the tape. So this machine belong to this lady right here. Here's her name. She cared enough to have a sticker that used to be on the front of this um, 221 manual. Ruth Keene in South Portland, Maine. Um, so it just says seven, there's no area code. So could have been a long time ago, really long time ago, but she cared enough to label, label her manual. So I want to pull out the machine and just very little bit of bubble wrap here. I am so, so fortunate that this bobbin winder is not broke. So, so fortunate. So also very fortunate that there is a bobbin case. And you guys that know featherweights, let me show you. This finger, you know let me get it the right spot. This finger should be up between these two springs right here. So that may be why the seller could not get it to sew as well. Also, this old belt is probably stretched out. But let's see. 
most likely this um, receptacle has been broke down here for a while. That's pretty common with the Bakelite. But look at her. I mean, I don't think this machine has been used very much. And I will come back later on with another video and we can look a little closer. And she's dusty. She's yucky. But let's see what else comes in the box. The important thing is we don't have any of the aluminum body broke. We don't have a spool pin broke. We don't have a bobbin winder broke. Um, everything looks in place as it should be. And again, this is not a formal, a thorough inventory. We have a black binder. I mean, not binder, but hammer. Um, binder. Super foot. Um, I'm not good with names of foot, but this feed, a lot of times this has a little guide on it. And I know I've seen this in the book. I'll have to go back and look it up. My memory doesn't um, serve me well right now. Ruffler. Um, I'm not sure the name of this. It kind of looks like a zipper foot, but it's a lot bigger. And I know that's not what it is. Um, this is used to apply decorative trim. Um, Another little narrow zipper foot. This is uh, right side. Another little hammer, cute little hammer. Oh boy, looky here. This is the bias tape cutting guide. I have a few of these. These come a lot of times in these accessory boxes and I love them. And you need to pull out the directions how to use them and try it because they really work. Um, so lots of little black felt and they're new and not used and there's a little black screw so I'll have to figure out maybe where it goes but real nice set of attachments here here's like everything's here maybe a little more maybe a little less but I'm glad that that first little bit of broken bakelite I found doesn't appear to be anything um, this is it right here doesn't appear to be um, cannot really find where it got where it and its friends go I'll inspect that foot pedal a little more but I didn't see anything right off and I'll look at the bottom of the machine let's do that real quick before I let you go and um, also, before I let you go, I'll pull out my phone, and there's the little accessories box. I'll pull out my phone, um, and um, we will see. You know, guys, I'm almost thinking that either that um, the receptacle was broke before and those pieces were just down in here. They obviously didn't know to use the holder for the foot pedal up here. So you guys that haven't seen this before and like I don't see there's nothing cracked or broke on this bakelite, bakelite pedal. So I think the receptacle on the machine was broke before and these pieces were just floating down in there. So the pedal goes in there like that. And uh, that's how you store, would have stored your pedal in your machine. But real quick, let's look at the bottom of it. Bottom of the machine, I'll hold it up. So it looks really nice. I'm gonna have to replace its feet it's like many, many featherweights and the, the feet are dry rotted. Um, there's a bulb in it, so we'll see about that um, if the light works later on. And I will definitely do another video. And I appreciate you um, letting me kind of come to you in this crude fashion unboxing. But I, I like to show you, like I did before, right when I get it off the doorstep pretty much. 
because I get excited about it. And when you get your vintage sewing machine on the doorstep, you should be excited. I do want to reiterate the way this machine packed was packaged was not ideal. It was, you know, missing a lot of um, packaging that should have should have been there. And um, but real quick, let me. Um, Look at the serial number. So it's an AL serial number, and I will plug it in to the app I've got. And when I get ready to um, put this video up, I will actually put the year in the com in the description of the video. Okay, but anyway. Let me show you the inside of the case just in case you're curious too. And that's the inside. Case looks to be in pretty good condition. Um, there's another screw, another screw rolling around in here. Doesn't appear to be a sewing machine screw. So I'll put that away. But anyway, guys, Let's back up. There she is. There's her packing. I'm pretty happy with the purchase. I don't think there's a lot to be upset with. Yes, the packaging and two, that the Bakelite receptacle for the plugs cracked. But when you get to looking at a lot of these vintage machines, there are a lot of Bakelite pieces that are broken. So I am thankful that nothing on the machine um, as far as the aluminum parts are broken doesn't seem to the spool pins not broken uh, the bobbin winders not broken and the finish of the machine and the decals are just gorgeous so um, thanks for watching this unboxing and hopefully I can come back in a few days and I'll have this machine up and sewing and I can show you and if not I'll tell you where I'm at with it and what I think the next steps are. But have a blessed day, and I'll see you guys again real soon.